Today we're going to talk about modeling with exponential and logarithmic functions. So let's dive in. Um, as usual, we're just going to present the concept and then do a few examples. We'll look at, as we're presenting the concept of exponential growth, we'll look at half-life and doubling time. Okay, so we've seen this before, but an exponential growth and decay model can be expressed as A of T, so the amount after time T is passed is equal to A sub zero, so your initial quantity, um, times E raised to the KT. We've seen that uh, described as the continuous exponential growth model. And it turns out it models a lot of real life applications well. So one important thing to note here is that with K, that's the growth or decay rate. And if you have a positive growth rate, K greater than zero, positive, you have a growth a situation, whereas if you have a rate that is negative, k less than zero, you have a decay situation. Um, and as always, the units of time are going to dictate, are, are going to be important. Uh, time doesn't have to be years, it could be minutes, it could be seconds, uh, it just depends on the problem that you're working with. Um, pretty much everything in this section is going to be an application of this formula, so that's an important one. So we'll start off by talking about half-life, and half-life is uh, for a radioactive material, it's the time it takes to decay to one half of the starting quantity of the material. So if we, before we read the rest of this slide, we could just think about that. So one half of the starting quantity. Well, we know that the starting quantity is a sub zero. And so one half of that amount would be one half time a, a naught or a sub zero. And that's what we're getting at here. So you don't need to memorize the formula for half-life. You can derive it from our understanding of the exponential growth model. Um, we're looking for the quantity, uh, a sub t. So the amount after some time has passed, that's one half of the original amount. So what we do is we substitute this into the original formula and we have one half a sub zero is equal to a sub zero e raised to the kt. And now we're savvy enough to know that we can divide away a sub zero on both sides. And when we do that, it'll reduce away and we'll be left with just one half is equal to e raised to the kt. So we're trying, we're in a situation where we've got a number on the left hand side of the equal sign and an expression with our variable t hidden up in a exponent. Keep in mind, we don't know the rate k yet, but t is going to be the variable that we're after here. Okay, so let's see here. We're after time. So what can we do? Well, if you want to get at an x uh, you want to solve a problem where your variable is trapped in an exponent. One method we know is, and probably arguably the best method, is to take the logarithm of both sides and then exploit our logarithm rules to uh, to isolate that variable, to bring it down out of the exponent so that we can uh, so that we can work with it. So by taking the, I use natural log because we have base e. So you could do this with log, but natural log is going to be nicer because we know that ln of e equals one, and that's going to become important here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, taking the log of both sides allows us to pop that exponent the out in front of the logarithm. So let's rewrite that ln of, you know, I'm going to change 1 half to 0.5 since I'm writing on a tablet. It's a little easier. And we're going to write k, oops, sorry, kt times ln of e. But we know ln of e is just 1. So this whole expression simplifies down to ln of 1 half I don't know, I'm going to go back to one half, uh, is equal to k times t. So if we're trying to solve for t, we can simply divide away the k now. That'll reduce away, divide k on both sides. And we get that the half-life, the formula for the time it takes to, if you know the decay rate, formula to get the time for a half-life is ln of one half over your decay rate of k. All right, uh, let's see. you can get fancy with logarithm rules and, and recognize that one half is really uh, two to the negative first power. And you can turn that ln of one half by using, by popping that negative to the outside. You can turn it to a negative ln of two. So sometimes you'll see this formula as t is equal to negative ln of two over k. That's really just playing with logarithm rules. I think it's, it's a little more writing to have one half inside the logarithm, but I think it's clearer to think of it this way, because we can just derive it that way. So there's your formula for the time for a half-life, given the decay rate. So we can use this to answer some questions, like how much of a material will be left after time 
given we know the half-life and initial quantity. So method to do this is first, we have to find our decay function and then use the decay function to predict uh, or answer our question. All right, so the half-life of a radioactive material is 15, 1,590 years. A sample of material is 500 milligrams. How much remains after 2,000 years? And we have uh, this slide and another one to use. So we'll, we'll start the problem here and we'll go from there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find our decay function. So step one here, find our decay function. Decay function. Well, what are we given? Let's start with the generic uh, exponential growth formula, a sub t, a naught, e to the kt power. What can we substitute in? Well, we know the half-life. Um, you know, we could cheat and uh, use that formula from the prior page, plug in k and find t, or I'm sorry, plug in t and find k. But, you know, let's just, let's just go with what we kind of pretend we didn't know that. Let's just say, all right, so we know, uh, we know the half-life and we know the initial quantity. So we'll substitute in the initial quantity, 500 e raised to the, we're not told the decay rate, so k, but we are told a time. We're told that half-life, 1590. So how much will you have after uh, one half life has passed? Well, you'll have one half of the initial quantity. So one half of 500 would give us 250. So now we can do the same kind of thing and follow our noses to find the one missing variable. We're gonna solve for K, our decay rate. Uh, to do that, we uh, are gonna divide 500 from both sides. That will reduce away nicely. That leaves us with one half equals e raised to the 1590 k. Once again, we're going to take the logarithm of both sides, ln of one half equals ln of e raised to the 1590 k power. And then that will simplify just as we did before. Pop that exponent expression out front. ln of one half is equal to 1590 k times ln of e. Sorry, that looks like h, ln of e. Well, ln of e is just one, so that goes away. And if you take the time to rewrite that, and you probably should, you can divide away 1590, and that will isolate your k, 1590. So we have a perfectly good number. k is equal to ln of 1 half over 1590. Now, there's nothing wrong with using that exact, exact value for your decay uh, rate. If you want to put it in a calculator and get a decimal, get at least five places, never go shorter than five places or you may risk getting a rounding error. But I'm gonna stick with the exact value for K or, um, and if you wanna see the decimal, go ahead and pause this and take a look at that. Okay, so how do we use this? Have we enough, enough information to get our decay function? Well, sure enough, just plug in what we know. A sub T is gonna be 500 E raised to the, well, K is now LN of one over half, divided by 1590. So that entire thing is our K, our decay rate. And so the only variable left is T, time. This gives us a decay function where we can plug in time and evaluate it to figure out the amount left after some time has passed. So revisiting our question, the second thing it asks is how much will we remain after 1200 years? Well, think about what we should expect for an answer. I'm sorry, I said 1200, I meant 2000. Well, we know the half-life is 1590, so we should have one half of 500, 250 grams after 1590 years. And after a, another 500-ish years, we should expect a little less than 250 grams because it's decayed for another 500 years. But let's see what we get using our function. Okay, so to answer the question, it really becomes a game of A, after 2000 years have passed, the amount after 2000 becomes 500 E raised to the ln of one half over 1590 times 2000. And careful here, this entire expression needs to be written in an exponent. Um, I wanna encourage you to use Desmos because it allows you to just type this stuff in. Use parentheses to ensure that the computer or calculator knows that this entire expression is the exponent on E. Go ahead and evaluate that. And I encourage you to pause this and do this on your own just to ensure that you get the same answer and you're inputting things into whatever calculator you're using correctly. But you should come up with 209.0817. And I'm looking at my notes. And even though I said go to 
five places, I went to four. Since this is the first time I rounded in this problem, you're pretty safe to assume that there are no rounding errors given we just went to four places there. All right, so there's an example of how you can use half-life. Uh, we didn't even do this problem using the half-life formula, but we could have. We could have solved k directly at the beginning using half-life formula of ln of one over two is equal to k is equal to t. Well, in our case, the half-life would be 1590, and it's a relatively basic algebra exercise that you're all capable of doing to rearrange this and see that k is sure enough um, ln of one half divided by 1590. But the point was you don't have to memorize that if you just kind of derive it from the given problem. All right, let's keep going here. I'm gonna pause and save this really quick. Yeah, we'll just save it, it'll be fine. All right, so the next thing is doubling time for a quantity. And it's really the same game, only instead of uh, decay, we're gonna have exponential growth and we're curious to know how long is it gonna take until we have double of the initial? In other words, two times your initial quantity. So to derive the formula for doubling time, it's a similar exercise, uh, replacing a sub t in our original formula, two a sub zero is equal to a sub zero e raised to the kt, and the algebra is very, very similar. You divide away the a zero, you take the logarithm of both sides, ln of two is equal to ln of e raised to the kt, pop that exponent out front using your logarithm properties, that's gonna give you k t times ln of e, which we know to be one. So we'll just go ahead and simplify that there. Now to isolate t, you just divide away k. And you've got a formula that gives you the time to double an initial quantity if you have exponential growth and you know the growth rate k is gonna be ln of two divided by k. So there's doubling time. Again, don't memorize these things. They're really just an application of that initial formula and plugging in what you know and solving for whatever remains. So let's take a look now at some examples. Uh, so it looks like I restated and summarized half-life and doubling time formulas. Again, don't memorize them, but just know how they come about. Half-life is uh, your end time a sub t is equal to one half of the initial amount. And doubling time is substituting a sub t in for twice times the initial amount. Do that and plug it in and drive them if you need them. So approach to application problems. Fill in and use the given information to find whatever variables you need. And typically, I'm going to say like fill in should just be exploit the original model and, and just see where the math takes you, the initial model for growth or decay. Generate your function solving for k. Find your, your decay or whatever you need to generate your model. Um, and then use the model to answer questions. Okay, so let's see. We've got a couple examples here. We've got a bacterial culture that grows exponentially. We're told that and has 600 bacteria after 10 minutes. After 40 minutes, there are a thousand bacteria. Um, we, notable things here. We are asked to find a bunch of stuff, but notable things, if you just read the question, we're not given the initial amount. After 10 minutes, we have 600, but we don't know how many we started with. So hence, they're asking us to find the initial amount. They want us to find the doubling period and then the population after so many minutes and then the time to reach a certain population. So how do we approach this? Just take a second, pause this and sort of write something down and see what you can come up with. All right, and there are three blank slides following this. So if you go ahead and try and fill in the formula, you're gonna find you're not able to fill much in. So what I'm gonna say is let's take the given information we have and let's create kind of, let's, well, let's just summarize it. I know that 40 minutes gives me an output of 600 and I'm writing this as, I'm thinking of the points as T comma A sub T, so a function, you know, input, output. Um, and then in blue, it looks like if we have, oh, I'm sorry, let me correct that. That's not 40 minutes, that is 10 minutes in red. And in blue, we have, um, let's see, 40 minutes gives us a population of 1000 bacteria. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put both of these into our um, general exponential growth or decay model and see what happens. 1000 equals, Sometimes in math, when you don't know what to, where to go, you kind of just start. 1,000 equals a sub zero. When we don't know the growth rate 
k, but we are told the time, so the time is going to be 40 minutes here. That gives us one equation. And I should have drawn a little arrow down. We'll just do it in red, whatever. Uh, similarly, same game over here. Substitute things in. After 10 minutes, you have 600. Uh, you don't know the initial quantity still. E raised to the no, no, don't know the Garrow's rate, but we are told the time. That gives us two equations. Okay, so what do we have here? We have two equations, two unknowns. We've played this game before at the beginning of uh, this unit. Two equations, two variables. We're going to play a game of substitution to solve for both the initial amount and our variables are the initial amount and the growth rate. But we can solve those. Two equations, two variables, we're capable of doing this. So let me see. Um, I don't see one that looks better or worse than the other. And so what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to solve this equation, the red equation for the initial quantity, by taking and dividing this on both sides. So we will divide the entire expression of e raised to the you know what, let's write that as 10k rather than k times 10. 10k, that whole expression will reduce away and we'll have e raised to the 10k on both sides. So our initial quantity, a sub zero, is equal to the expression 600 divided by 10 uh, e, e raised to the 10k power. What are we going to do with this? Well, I've isolated one variable, so I'm going to substitute that into this other equation. So putting, replacing a sub zero with that expression over there, we get, uh, well, a sub zero is going to be 600 divided by e raised to the 10k. And then we're going to have that expression times e raised to the 40k. Now be careful with your fraction rules here, right? The red e to the 10k is in the denominator, where if you think of this as a fraction, that would be over 1, and that would be in the numerator. Don't be tempted to reduce things away. They have different exponents. However, before we move on to the next step, it might be helpful to review that we know what to do here. x raised to the 3 over x raised to the 2 is equal to x to the first power. x to the 3 minus 2 is the rule. So we are going to apply this rule to simplify the expression of what we have over here. We have e raised to the 40k. Let me retry that. e raised to the 40 k over e raised to the 10 k. Well, the base is the same, just like in our x example. So what we can do is we can subtract our exponents. Doing that, we get e raised to the 40 k minus 10 k gives us e to the 30 k. So using that, we can simplify this whole expression to 1,000 equals 600, dropping the red and blue. We're just moving forward with blue here. e to the 40k over e to the 10k becomes e to the 30k. All right, that looks better. Now, what do we have? We have one equation with only one variable, which we know how to solve. We can do that. Um, so I'm going to start this on the next page. OK, so we, we had 1,000 equals 600 e raised to the 30k. We're going to divide 600 on both sides. We're trying to isolate that k, so we'll just move forward slowly. 600, or 10 divided by 600 gives us drop the zeros. Those reduce away. 10 over 6, let's reduce that to 5 over 3. It's a little shorter to write, plus reducing things is always good form. e raised to the 30k. Now again, we have the variable trapped in an exponent. So once again, we're going to take the natural log of both sides, always natural log, because we're dealing with base e, and ln of e to the 1 is going to help us out. That allows us to once again pop out that exponent out front. ln of 5 thirds is equal to 30k times ln of e, which we know to be 1. So now to solve for k, I just have to divide away that 30 on both sides. And that gives me k is equal to ln of 5 over 3 over 30. And yeah, you can and are welcome to plug that into a calculator. But I'm going to stick with that exact value and just use that as our decay rate. OK, so I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and circle this. And, and we'll just choose to use black because it's a nice different color and easy to spot. That's a useful piece of information because that's a concrete number that represents our growth, our, our growth or decay rate. Um, we'll be able to use that 
to help generate our function. What do we need next? Well, next, we're going to use this. We know a, a k now. We're going to use this to find the other missing variable, used to find a naught. Used to find a naught. How should we do that? Well, we can plug this into either of the equations. It doesn't matter now, but I'm just going to choose to use the um, the 600 one. So I don't know. I think it was red. Uh, the color doesn't matter. 600 equals a naught e raised to the k times 10. You know, pop back to the prior page. 600 equals a sub zero e raised to the k times 10 power. Okay. Well k we now know a value for. We know k in that black box over there is ln of 5 thirds divided by 30. And then we know t here is going to be 10. You can go ahead and reduce that if you want to, but we're just going to say that's an awful lot to write. I think it's time that for a naught um, is equal to, let me, let me, let me see here. Oh, okay. All right. So this entire expression is a number. Go ahead and use calculator if you want, but if you want to, remember to carry at least five decimal places, so that way subsequent calculations don't have a rounding error. I'm just going to work with that exact number. So to isolate a zero, I need to get rid of that number. How do you do it? It's being multiplied, so I'm just going to divide away that number. Using number as shorthand to avoid writing it twice, so what am I dividing on the right? Same thing as I divide on the left. So e raised to the giant exponent ln of 5 thirds over, now 10 over 30 leaves us with 1 over 3. So I'm just going to reduce that exponent there. So what we've got here is we've got an expression, an exact value for a sub 0. Well, uh, that's too much to write. a sub 0 equals use a calculator, plug in that quantity, and you will, should get 506.0596. And even though I said five, my notes only went to four. Just, just use five, do as I say, not as I do, right? All right, circle that, because that's a concrete value for, well, at least a reasonably accurate concrete value for a naught, and that allows us to generate our our growth function, because this is a situation where we have bacterial growth that's getting larger. So a sub t is equal to our initial quantity, 506.0596. And I know you can't have 506.0596 initial bacteria, but carry that, those decimal places anyway. Otherwise, you do risk making a rounding error. So e raised to, well, we know k. k is now ln of 5 over 3 divided by 30 times t. And again, this entire quantity is the exponent on that e. So there is our growth function. Does that answer the questions? Well, what answers were we, what questions were we actually asked? We were asked for the initial value. Well, a, a naught is equal to 506. Point 0596 bacteria, whatever, close enough. All right, um, now we need our, the second thing we're asked is we're asked to find doubling time. So let's go ahead and do that. Double time, double time. All right, doubling time, um, you're gonna have twice your initial amount is equal to your initial amount, e raised to the kt. We already derived this. So I'm going to take a little shortcut here and say that if you do some math, you'll end up with uh, dividing away the a naughts will give you 2 equals e raised to the kt. Take the logarithm of both sides, and you'll end up with ln of 2 is equal to kt. And then from there, we're interested in time. So we'll solve for time, dividing k on both sides. And we'll have t is equal to ln of 2 over k. But we know k. We know k, so we can substitute in our value for our rate. We know this quantity, and check back on the prior slide. It's, it's ln of 5 thirds divided by 30. Careful with your fraction bars here. There's the top, 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 and then we have an entire fraction being divided on the bottom. 
go ahead and, you know, I'm, I'm curious to know what this actual time is. So punch that into calculator, 40.7075. And since it's a time, we should probably, you know, we threw bacteria as our label on the initial quantity. It makes sense to label things with the appropriate labels. Uh, and the initial units given for time were minutes. And so this will be in 40.7075 minutes, we will have a double our initial quantity, doubling time. The next two questions were, we wanna know the population at 115 minutes. Well, let's just, before we go ahead and fill this out, we know that the initial population was about 506 and the doubling time was 40 minutes. So after 115 minutes, that's at least two doubling periods. We should have 506 doubles, let's say 500 doubles to 1,000, 1,000 then is gonna to double to about 2,000. I'm gonna just do a, a loose estimate of 2,000 there because we've had two doubling periods. So ready, steady, go. We can just use this, our use our growth model, A sub T is equal to 506.0596, our model that we did all that work to create, E raised to the, our growth rate, LN of five thirds, divided by 30 times the input, 115. I guess I could have written 115 here, the uh, amount after 115 minutes. And again, remember that that entire expression is in the exponent. All right, uh, go ahead and you know use your calculator to evaluate that. You should get 3,586.09. And what are we talking about? This is a population of bacteria. So we'll label our answer with bacteria. My estimate was poor, but it wasn't the worst. 500 doubles to 1,000, 1,000 doubles to that. Um, that was only, took us up to 80 minutes. Another doubling period of 40 minutes would take you to 120. So it makes close, we're close. It makes sense we're almost to that about 4,000 where you take 500 to 1,000 to double initially, 1,000 to 2,000 and double a second time. 2,000 to 4,000 double a third time, which would be 120 minutes. And we're nearly there with about 3,500. Our last question, I lied, this is the last slide. Our last question is time, time to reach a population of 14,000 bacteria. So just choosing another color for no reason other than I just want a different color, 14,000 is the population after time has passed. Using our growth model again, we'll use our function to answer our question. 506.0596 E raised to the LN of five thirds over 30. And the question this time is asking for T, our time. So what do we have? It's complicated, but it's really the same situation we started out with, which is an equation with one variable stuck up in an exponent. What do you do? Try and isolate the variable and then use logarithms to get at that variable. So the first thing we're gonna do is divide the 506 uh, initial quantity on both sides. And then that's going to give us the, and just rewriting things, 14,000 over five, whoops, let's make that shorter. I'm gonna rewrite things and make space to do the next step, which is gonna be take the logarithm of both sides. So I don't run out of room here. Um, e raised to the ln of five thirds over 30 T. Now we've got, again, an equation with one variable stuck up in an exponent. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna take the natural logarithm of both sides that's gonna allow us to pop this entire exponent out in front of the log, which is going to give us ln of 14,000 divided by 506.0596 is equal to ln, uh, I'm sorry, not ln, equal to the exponent popped out front, which has an ln, ln of 5 thirds divided by 30, times t times ln of e. And once again, ln of e is one, so that part of our equation goes away. Now to solve for t, we have to divide away this expression. 
How do you divide away that expression? Well, we don't divide away fractions. We are far, far and away smart enough to realize that it's far easier and better to multiply fractions when you want to get rid of them. So t times ln of 5 thirds over 30. To get rid of that fraction in front of the t, I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal 30 over ln of 5 thirds. Why does that help? Because everything reduces away nicely and leaves me with just t. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So we'll rewrite our ln of 14,000. That's an extra zero. So we'll just swallow it up with the parentheses. 506 dot dot dot. And then we're going to do the same thing we did to the right side. We're going to multiply by 30 over ln of 5 thirds. And I really know, I, I know I've been saying it before, but I really want to encourage you to stop and pause and do this in the calculator to make sure you're inputting things correctly. It's important to realize that this is the entire argument for that natural logarithm to the right of our multiplication sign, whereas this is entirely in the denominator over the 30. So you should have two fractions. Well, you should have this you can think of as a fraction being multiplied by this as the numerator of a fraction. Go ahead and try it. Make sure you get the same thing I get. So when you evaluate this in a calculator, you will get approximately 194.98776. And what are we after? We're after time, so it's going to be minutes. So what did we just kind of find out? Well, we found out that the last problem, 115 minutes, we're at 4,000. Wow, if you uh, let it go for another 100 or 200 minus 115, maybe 80 minutes or so, your population blows up. It goes from 4,000 to 14,000. Exponential growth and decay. Oh, yeah, hopefully this has been helpful. Have a good day.